I recently had a viewer watch one of my older videos where I did that effect that I just did, pushing the last scene out of the way. And they asked for a tutorial on how to do it. And it's actually really simple. And it's actually something that's been around for a real long time. Here's an example. Do you know where the bank is? Why, certainly. So, that was one example, but actually in that film, uh, they actually did it a number of times. So, uh, here's actually another example of that same effect from the same film. What are you going to do, cook something? Yes, I'm going to cook his goose. Taking my money out of the bank, I'll give him plot. So as you can see, you can go either way. You can even go up and down if you want, like this. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a few different techniques to create that simple effect. We'll be looking at Caden Live, so get ready, here we go, we're actually going to be editing the video you're watching right now. So what you've already seen is about to happen, yes. So anyway, here we go. Okay, here we are inside Caden Live. Uh, I've already imported my little video clips, as well as uh, the Laurel and Hardy clips, and cropped those down to the parts of the film that uh, I showed. And we're going to create the stuff you just saw, because I haven't created it yet. What you saw is what we're going to create right now. Um, so, first things first, I have my little intro here for Films by Chris. And only let that play through and it shatters apart again, but this time I'm going to want to pause it here to give it uh, something for me to push. So uh, with that selected and my line right there, I'm going to come up here to our effects list and I'm going to type in, uh, I think it's freeze, yep, freeze, and I will double click that. And it says uh, we want to freeze it after this point. So it will play and then freeze when we get to those words there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to now look at this clip of me, the first one of me pushing across. Now, in this particular case, as far as um, pushing it, we're just going to use a simple transition effect, which is what you can use majority of the time. The important thing is if you're going to use this type of uh, uh, transition for this, you're going to want to have a steady push. You want to be going across the screen constantly at the same pace. You don't want to slow down or stop at any point. So let me find the point of the screen. I'm going to use my left arrow to go frame by frame to where my hand just comes in right there and I'm going to trim my video down to there. Now I'm going to find where my hand goes off. So right about there would probably be good. So this is our transition. I'm going to hit control and scroll the center mouse to zoom in. So right there is where I want this clip to end. So I'm going to grab it there and right there. So let's check it. I want this clip here to end right where my hands go off the screen. So that's pretty much pretty close. Let's move this back. A few shots. Okay. A few frames. And that should work. So now what we're going to do, now that we have those lined up and I'm walking across the screen at a constant pace, I'm going to click the corner there to add a dissolve, a transition, and I'm going to change that transition um, to a different type of transition, a wipe. So we have the wipe here and it's still dissolving. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to choose what type of wipe we want. We're going to want basic linear on the X. So now we do that. Whoop, it's going the wrong way though. So we're going to choose our, our wipe here again. And we're going to choose reverse. Now if we watch it, Now there's a little bit where my hands, it looks like my front hand's pushing it, which is fine because I'm not directly lined up in front of the camera. The thing is, this is such a short time, a short uh, clip, that you're almost not going to notice it. If I wanted to, I could adjust the video a little bit, but 
you know, for what we're doing right now, that works good enough. So here we go. I'm talking. So I'm going to grab there. That's going to be where this next one's going to start. So let's come over here to our Laurel and Hardy clip. I'm going to line that up there. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I've got the one track over the other. I'm going to click this little film strip here, and that will make that top track invisible. And I'm going to go to... Oh, you know what? I went off the screen there a little bit, so I actually want to move that to right here. And we want to go to right where my hand goes off. So right there, I'm going to drag this clip like so. Again, same thing. Click the corner to add a dissolve. I'm going to change that to a wipe effect. And I'm going to change the file image to be, in this case, a linear X. And if we watch it now... Oh, got to re-enable that track. So... Went a little fast. Did I uh, not line that up right when I went off the screen? Yeah, let's go to... Let's stretch this out. It's because of where my hand goes off the screen. I want it right there as my hand disappears. That should be a little bit better. Again, re-enable that track so you can see it. Uh, it's still moving faster than me. Now, there is a way to tweak this. And the problem here is probably because I didn't keep a steady pace. But we could also try moving this a little bit more. Nope, see, that gets us off. So the transition is great when you move at a constant pace, but the problem here is I started off at one speed and I either sped up or slow, slowed down while I was walking. Um, so we have another option here, though, other than using the wipe. Again, the wipe works great when you move at a constant pace. It doesn't always happen that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that transition and I'm going to select our top video here. And in our effects list, I'm going to type in pan. And you can see we have this pan and zoom. So I'm going to double click that to add that to here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the first frame of this by clicking here. So click the, the track we just added the pan zoom effect to. Click this to go to the first keyframe, which it already has a keyframe there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that off the screen. Now we also want to add in a composite layer here. So I'm going to click the, uh, the transition effect back here. And you can see it says dissolve. We're going to change that to composite right there so we can see what's going on. So I have that there. Again, clicking our Laurel and Hardy clip, the top clip here. And I'm going to go to the end here. And you can see that it's moved in the timeline here. So I'm going to go to right where my hand goes off. Right there. And I'm going to add another keyframe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click center this way, center that way. So now we have this animation. But we have control. We can set more keyframes to line it up a little bit better. So I'm going to go here again, again with this layer selected. I'm going to add another keyframe. I'm going to move it back so it's right on my hand there. And anytime you move it left or right, we want the, the vertical to stay the same. So we can always click this center here to center it vertically. And so now we can see it's staying right on my hand. And if it ever gets off again, which it does right about there, you kind of want to go to the middle where it's off. You know, limit the number of keyframes you have to create. Add a keyframe. Drag it. So it's on my hand again. Align it vertically, which it seems to be. And now let's watch. Perfect. So if we can go through our clip here. And so they did their effect. Again, I, I can speculate on how they did that with film without computers, but I don't know for sure. I'm going to grab the next clip of myself. Drop that down here. And find where I, once again come onto the screen, and I'm going to try to do the basic transition one like we did in the first case, because that was the easiest to do if I keep a constant pace. So again, I'm going to hide that top layer, and we want the going off the screen to 
be right about there. And we'll try the transition again. So I'm going to add a transition, click on where it says dissolve, go down to wipe. Whoops. So you can see, again, the other way works and you have more control over it, but if you don't need that control, this way could be a little bit faster. Again, I think I'm going to have to reverse it. Let's re-enable this layer here. Re-enable this layer here. Yep, so click the wipe, reverse it, and let's watch it. Gets a little off there. So unfortunately, I can't use the wipe there as well. Um, but we'll keep that wipe and change it to a uh, composite. Again, choosing our top layer. Now we already have the pan zoom because we did it at the beginning of this. So what we're going to want to do is go to the beginning of this clip here and set another keyframe. So go back right to there, add a keyframe so that it doesn't move while we're watching that clip. We'll go to the end of this and we'll move it all the way off the screen. So add a keyframe drag it all the way off the screen, so it's just off the screen, and we're going to center it vertically. So essentially we just did the same as the wipe effect here, but again, we need to line up. So I'm going to go somewhere in the middle here, choose the compo or sorry, choose that top layer, add another keyframe, line it up with my hand, center it vertically. Let's see, so we're going to want to add another keyframe in the middle there, and the second half looks good, so let's go halfway in between our two keyframes here, add a keyframe, line it up, center it horizontally or vertically. So again, right here the hand is a little bit off. Uh, it's probably better to have the hand overlapping the image rather than the space between it, but again this is going to be such a quick clip that no one's going to notice. So we have that there. Let's go here. Now we have our second Laurel and Hardy clip. Let's find, I'm going to pull the screen. Yeah, I'm going to pull the screen here. So do, 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 do. Right here is where I want this clip to start. Let's mute that track. And I certainly don't think I kept a steady pace there. Did not look like it. So let's end that clip there. And we'll again add a pan and zoom effect to the top layer. So we're going to do the same thing again. So if you didn't catch it the first time, you're going to see it again. We're going to add the pan and zoom. And uh, we'll re-enable this clip. We're also going to add our little compositor. So click the corner there to add a, a transition of a dissolve and then change that to a composite. Uh, now select our top layer here. Go to the first keyframe and we are going to drag it all the way off just so it's just off the screen center it vertically we're going to go all the way to here back one and add a keyframe and we're going to center and center that will put the video right smack in the center there so now let's watch see what we got oh I probably could have done the wipe it does seem to be working pretty well so could have done a wipe there. I didn't think I kept a steady pace as I was walking across the screen. So again, he pulls the screen there. He does this whole little where he lets go and it slides back, so you could do that as well. Again, uh, Stan Laurel was a genius. So uh, here we go, the third clip of me. And this time I go the other way, so find where I start there. Probably should have... Uh, done a better job of not letting my hand come up like that. But we'll start it right there. Clip it there. Find where I go off the screen right there. So line that up if we can. Let's add the transition. We'll try the wipe here, but if not, we'll go back. We already have the pan and zoom effect on that top player, so we're already halfway there. Uh, we'll say Y linear and reverse it in this case. Oh, you know what? That's not reversing it. Do that. Invert it in this case because it was going the right way. Oh, no, it looks like we're going to be reversing it and inverting it. Can get a little confusing. <laughs> uh, 
No, see, that's too far off. See, last time I could have used the wipe and I didn't. This time I thought I could and I couldn't. So I'm going to choose the wipe. So here we are. I'm showing you, again, two different ways of doing this. we got the composite here. Let's check on, check on the layer here. Go to where I'm using, again, my left arrow to line that up frame by frame right there. And we're going to add a keyframe. We'll go to the last frame there, and we'll drag it. Or sorry, add a keyframe once you go to that last frame. Drag it to here, align it vertically, and that still looks pretty good. But we got that space right there, which is why we um, didn't do it. But you know, it's lined up there, so we're going to want to add a keyframe here before we add any other keyframes because that looks good. We're going to go here and. Again, I try to go straight for the middle somewhere in between our keyframes. Uh, that way, you let the computer do most of the work of animating it. So, let's see. Pushing, 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 pushing. Looked good. Now, we're going to do the same thing with the pull from the top. So, right there to right there. I really wish I got out of the camera view there, but it's not a big deal to there and then grab the next clip of me. Oh, just me marking my spot where I'm going to stand, where the camera is focused to. Oh, you know what? It's I went across the screen like that was really unnecessary. I'm going to clip it right here. Oops. Based on where I start talking. So hopefully this is not getting too tedious for you. I'm just showing you the same things again. Uh, add that dissolve effect. Now you could use a, another wipe. I can go here and I can do instead of X linear, we can go Y linear. And that might work. I started it too soon. Let's just go ahead and use the composite. So, oh, I'm sorry, the uh, pan zoom. So add a transition, make it composite. A majority of the time you're going to have to use the composite just because you don't move as smoothly as a computer does, you know, as calculated. Um, but, let's see, right here. You know what, I am, I am going to try to use the wipe. I know I keep changing my mind. That's part of, of doing it, you know, playing with it, picking what works the best. I'm going to try the linear wipe here. Re-enable that track. Because I move pretty fast. So it gets off a little bit at the end. And that's a shame because that was almost... I could probably start it a little bit later. Which might fix our... Nope, that's too late. Go back... Maybe right there. Let's see if that lines it up a little bit better. Again, I'm too, too, too far off at the end there. So again, I'm going to go change my mind for a third time. Go to Composite. I'm going to add the effect of Pan Zoom to this top layer here. And um, I might even move the video back a little bit. No, right there is actually pretty good. So... Got our pan zoom, got our first frame done here. Going to go to right here to where we line up with the second clip and add a keyframe there. Go back to the first one, drag the video up. Now this time we're dragging it up. We're going to align it uh, on the horizontal line. Well, I kept saying vertical, it depends on how you're picturing it. Um, but we're going to align it left and right where before we were aligning it up and down. So now. We're going to add a keyframe to line up a little bit better. We get off right about there. So I'm going to add another keyframe right there in between the two. Drag it down. Now you can see I, I get off. I'm not going to have it perfectly aligned there. And that's why we do our alignment here, which will center it. And again, I'm still even a little bit off at the end. So let's, uh, let's add another keyframe and actually censored up a little early. There we go. So so that was a real quick one. Boom. 
So I hope you found the story useful. Again, very simple, especially if you can just use the basic wipe effect. Um, but again, the wipe effect depends on you doing a very smooth, constant speed when you're walking across the screen, either pushing or pulling. Uh, where you could use the pan and zoom and set a number of keyframes, and then the number of keyframes depends. Again, the smoother you are with your movement, the less keyframes you'll need. So, I hope you did enjoy this tutorial. I hope you visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. And uh, I'm going to finish editing up this video by throwing in this particular uh, clip you just finished watching into what onto this timeline of what we created or what you watched at the beginning of the video. So a little time travel there, I guess. So again, thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the Cake. Check out the link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this topic. If you did, give the video a, a thumbs up, a like, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss other videos. Again, as always, have a great day. Come on! Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into.